Welcome everyone. We are so glad that you are joining us. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest today, Dr. Sue Mortar. Dr. Sue Mortar is an international speaker, celebrated author, teacher, and doctor with over 30 years of experience, bringing together ancient wisdom traditions with cutting edge quantum science. Her highly praised The Energy Codes guide you to unprecedented levels of self-expression, health, and healing by building neurocircuitry to raise your cellular vibrational frequency. Dr. Sue's visionary models and techniques ignite an entirely new approach to accessing creative genius and living from personal freedom. Welcome, Dr. Sue. So exciting. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much. It's always a joy to be here with the shift and uh, the amazing things that unfold in every program that you guys put together. So uh, it's my delight. Thank you. Dr. Sue, when did you first realize that everything was energy and that we, that our health, our life could possibly be a reflection of that energy, that energy field? Hmm. So great question. I, I came upon this uh, quite innocently, actually. I was raised in a family. My father was a pioneer in energy medicine uh, in the 70s when the words energy and medicine weren't really used in the same sentence together. But he was interested in bioenergetics and how this energy moves through the body and how we can influence that flow of energy for, for health and vitality. And so as a researcher and a healer, uh, he was bringing this conversation into our dinner table conversations constantly. So then as quantum science was coming on to the picture, that became part of our regular ongoing conversation. And so I kind of grew up inside of this reality that everything is energy and we influence the energy by the focus of our mind and the quality of the thoughts that we think and, and then therefore our beliefs beliefs that, that get kind of ingrained and generate a reality that we're walking around inside of thinking that that's the only reality that there is. And so um, it's been it's been a long, beautiful journey for me to, to be aware of these concepts. And then about 20 years ago, I had a, an awakening during a, a, a meditation practice. And I truly exalted into a higher state of consciousness that opened up doorways as my third eye opened and I had an entirely different reference point for uh, what this life experience is and how we are truly able to be masters at this idea of, of moving energy in, in terms of, of uh, medicinal modalities that are helpful to ourselves and to the whole of humanity. And uh, so I turned my life into a living laboratory after that exalted state. And for the next 10 years, I started working with how to recreate that exalted state of consciousness for myself and then teaching my patients and my clients uh, how to utilize those same tools for their own healing. And so that was the birthing of the energy codes, which is uh, the book that I wrote and the coursework that I teach in terms of uh, utilizing energy for healing. So there's a long answer to your question, but they won't all be that long, but I just wanted to kind of set a context there that, that this isn't just something that I read about and then wanted to talk about. It's been my life and it's been a glorious, a glorious life. I've never gone to the doctor and taken an antibiotic to heal something or, or utilize medicines. I've never had a prescription drug uh, in my repertoire. And so I've been using these energy flow systems and uh, consciousness to, to self-heal. And, uh, and it is, uh, it's definitely possible for anyone. Thank you so much. I actually enjoyed that story very much as it also, I think invites us to understand that there are different types of awakenings, right? We can be born into something, we have an energy and then we have this awakening such as you did and with your support and with the energy codes that we're going to find out about even more, uh, maybe we can have more of them. So science shows us there is a difference between our genetic makeup and our energetic makeup. Can you explain what that means, Dr. Sue? Well, sure. Quantum science is showing us and the, the world of epigenetics, which is more of a biology science, but it's the new science of biology that is teaching us that the nucleus of the cell of our bodies, the, the nuclei of the cells aren't the brains of the cell, that the actual brains of the cell are the surface of the cell. So it would be the equivalent of our skin. So on the surface of the cell wall, there are these little antennas that are picking up vibrational frequencies all the time and then reporting that information into the inner workings of the cell and telling the cell what chemistries to produce or how 
to behave or to operate based upon the environment that we are in. And so epigenetics is teaching us that our environment is uh, more important than our genetic inheritance. And so when we couple that with meaning, what that means is if those little antennas are picking up on a message that says the coast is clear, then, then everything inside that cell all the way down to the molecules, including our DNA molecular structure, starts to receive a message that all is well. And so it starts turning on and turning off uh, whatever needs we may have to meet our environmental circumstance. And so, and so what we're learning uh, is that our energetic environment is more important than our genetic inheritance in that if we're creating the proper environment for healing and wholeness to exist, it will exist. And if we're creating an environment that just insists upon running from the bear or fighting or holding on to that grudge from three days ago or three years ago or three decades ago, that ultimately the cells are gonna behave in accordance with that. So it was quite a breakthrough for science to, to recognize that we're in so much more charge of our reality than we thought. Likewise, there is a um, there is a uh, there is research, multiple uh, research studies that are showing us that that we can turn on and turn off this DNA molecule in a manner that will actually have an influence on our environment. So we're creating a world and then having an influence on the world around us based upon how we're guiding and steering and vibrating our energy system uh, in the ways that we're learning how to do. So not only do we change our own genetic uh, uh, expression, we also have an influence on how photons, tiny little packets of energy arrange themselves in our environment based upon the vibrational frequency that is emitting from our own DNA molecular structure and then our cells and organs and glands in our body as a whole. So it's quite an exciting frontier for us to be on and uh, in a beautiful time to be alive as a human being because we're constantly being offered up opportunities to either find ourselves in a very friction oriented environment or one that we're just choosing to bring uh, possibility into. Um, and so we're getting a lot of practice these days on how to master our environment so that our body and our cells can respond with vital force and health. Uh, absolutely true. We are getting so much practice. And what is more important than healing on the body's priority scale, Dr. Sue? Yeah, so this is an interesting topic. So it's important for everyone to realize that, that the body operates on a priority basis, period. And it will, uh, as long as we are generating surviving types of impulses, then the body's going to have to respond in survivorship. In other words, if we're constantly worrying or fretting or thinking of negative things or, or these things are running through our minds and we're not embracing them and loving compassionately into these negative thoughts, then what happens? happens is it sends a message to the body that basically says, you know, you're under potential threat here all the time. And so the body will not move into a healing priority as long as there is a surviving priority that is higher on the, the priority ladder, if you will, than, than healing. So in other words, if, if we are suffering from some pain pattern, um, like low back pain or hip pain or knee pain or, or headaches or something along these lines, which is very very common for lots and lots of people. Um, the body will not go to work on healing that if it is in its priority check check uh, and balance system ever detecting that there's something more life-threatening than your back pain or your knee pain or your hip pain or your headaches. And so it won't go to work on healing those things because it only has so much energy and it's going to go to work on keeping you alive because it's much more important that you stay alive than it is to, than to relieve your back pain. So the types of things, for instance, that would be more important than healing would be a chemical imbalance. Chemical imbalances are generated all the time because of stresses that we perceive ourselves to be in and the reactions that we are giving to those stresses. And so we're constantly pumping the chemistries into our body that would allow us to fight the bear or run from the bear or do whatever it is that, that we feel you know, most likely to help us in an emergency situation. But those chemistries have nothing to do with healing. Those chemistries are different chemistries and the whole physiological state jumps into fight or flight instead of, you know, chilling and opening, relaxing and looking around and seeing, okay, you know, what can I do to improve my circumstance rather than having to work on just getting by and surviving this moment? 
And so the number one thing that is more important than healing is survivorship. So I would say to anyone who's watching, uh, if you have had a health condition that is prolonged, that it doesn't, is just unrelenting, that isn't going away, then chances are you are plugging in to a belief pattern or a disposition pattern of your focus, of your come from, identifying who you are as someone who's under threat. And so your body is constantly spending its energy to keep you surviving, and it's not able to get to the priority of healing, which is priority number two. It can't get to the second one if the first one is never uh, is never uh, relieved. And uh, and so it's our job to recognize what we're doing to ourselves by constantly worrying, constantly checking in, constantly needing to be validated, or or wondering what what our future is, and and so forth. So. Certainly, I don't ever mean to have someone think that if they have those worries, they're never going to heal. I'm just drawing attention to the fact that if you do have those worries, the single most important thing you can do is to love into the worries with compassion, because the love will transmute the vibrational frequency of worry and allow your cells to receive a different vibration and they will respond to the love prior or more profoundly than they will respond to an emergency fight or flight message because love is a very expansive energy uh, tool and a vibrational frequency that, that truly dissolves everything else. Nothing can survive in the face of love. And it's an important thing for people to remember. Oh, if I'm just willing to love in this moment, love anything, my cells are gonna receive that vibration even if I'm just loving compassionately this mind of mine that keeps worrying and writing stories and creating you know, this incredible tension in my life. Thank you so much. I think that it's very important, I mean, throughout time, but especially in the times that we're living in where we're getting truly tested to open up into the potentials of healing and also to love ourselves more and others who may have different opinions, right? This will Absolutely. affect us as we yes. dive into more of our own love and our own expansion. Well, how do we build this energetic circuitry to heal more profoundly in every level of our lives? So, so we have to think of circuitry as a means of communication and connectedness and integration. And so neurocircuitry is how we send an impulse from one part of the body through a cable network to another part of the body. So the brain is sending messages, the body parts are sending messages to the brain, and, and that is neurocircuitry. Well, there's another system that runs our body that happens to be very relevant in an energy medicine uh, conversation. And it has to do with the electromagnetic energy field. And so this electromagnetic energy field and the nervous system are the two systems that run our body and run our lives. And they have to be operating in harmony with themselves and then with each other in order for our system to be in a fluid flowing self-healing um, position. And so what we have to realize is that of those two systems, the electromagnetic energy system is actually the, the uh, foundational uh, system of the two. The electromagnetic energy system built the nervous system in the developing embryo. So this electromagnetic energy system is everything. And we can also learn how to build energetic circuits flows and streams of energy, similar to what someone might think of as acupuncture, would utilize a needle to route the energy in these invisible pathways to another area of the body. And that is what is happening with bioenergetic work when we're implementing our own consciousness and our ability to move energy in our own, uh, in our own lives, in our own bodies and in our, in our life experience at large. So, so let me just give everyone some experience as I'm describing this, because it's so much easier to get it experientially. In fact, it's the best form of instruction that exists on the planet. Aristotle uh, you know, was, was quoted as, as referencing that. So, so let's just imagine that someone is walking into the room that you're sitting in right now and coming through a doorway, and that someone is coming through the doorway, and they are a person that you... Uh, get triggered by. 
they have something about them or there's something in your relationship dynamic that just pushes your buttons. And, and so, uh, so let's say that they're coming in the room and notice what happens to your energy. You see them coming through the door. There they are. They push your buttons. This is the deal. And your energy automatically leaves your system and goes over there to them. We disempower, we give our energy away, which is giving our power away. We throw it all because of a story that is being you know, carried in our lives based upon past experience or what have you. Um, and that energy disembodies from our own system. And so what we have to learn to do is to claim that energy back. And as we do so, just by our conscious intentionality, we will call that energy back onto the self. And as we do, there's an empowerment that is actually automatically felt. So let's just do this for a second. Just imagine them walking through the door. There they are in all their glory and doing all the things that they do and about to say that thing again that they say that just, you know, gets you going in whatever manner. And feel your energy rush off you. Feel what it feels like in your own body. Feels a little vacant, a little collapsed, feels a little lacking, which is a whole nother impetus that gets us down the path even further. And now let's just claim it back. Let's just say, oh, you know, excuse me, I gave a little too much of that away. I'm just going to pull that back right here and have it. So just claim it back. And you don't have to reach your arms out and do this whole thing. I'm just showing you. You can just like secretly, stealthily pull it back in where it belongs. And now there's a robust, you know, feeling of, selfness and uh, a, a personal presence that will allow you to make different decisions in your life. Okay, so now uh, we're going to take this feeling of uh, selfness, a self-awareness, a sense of self, and we're going to do something with it to build upon it and to allow this work with energy to be even more profound. But first, I want to show you just a little something here. All right. This image, and I think maybe we can get this to, uh, to show up, okay? This image is how energy flows through our body. It runs down through the system, hits the earth, turns and rises back up through the body, and as such, starts to cycle around and around. It shoots out the top of our head, cycles around the outside of the body, is taken up again, and just recycles and recycles. It's constantly being replenished. There's more coming in. It's constantly hitting the earth, and there's more rising. And this energy is actually you. You are the energy of energy medicine. Energy medicine isn't ultimately supposed to be a description of how you move energy through your body. Ultimately, energy medicine would be you recognizing that you are an energy being, that everything is energy, including you, and you are this cosmic universal energy that is compressing itself into a channel and descending to the earth and rising. You're presenting yourself here in this way. And the more we know that, the more we can operate this way. But here's how most people are operating, okay? We come in, we hit the earth, fine, everything's doing what it's supposed to do, and then this energy rises. And because there are aspects of ourselves that we have shut down or deflected or denied or we don't have confidence in or we have beliefs that are duping ourselves, this energy as it rises has to go around these gaps in our circuitry. And because it has to go around it, it picks up a wobble. And when it picks up this wobble, it creates a distortion in the energy field that we are walking around inside of. So this person is standing here looking out through a distorted energy field, and they see a world that doesn't care. They see a world that doesn't love them. They see a world that, that they're not automatically belonging in because there's a distortion in the field. And so what we want to do is start to carve a pathway here that allows more and more and more of this energy to start to refine the system again and perfect the field again so that this individual feels like they're in harmony and feels like they're able to self-heal and uh, able to engage and initiate and, and plug into the world as if the world was there at, in service to them and their beautiful life experience, okay? So what we're gonna do right now is take this feeling of self that we're reclaiming back from the person who walked in our door, uh, we're gonna claim it back, and now we're just gonna start to breathe up and down this channel. Because if we will breathe up and down this channel right here, it will start to carve a pathway. Instead of going around all of this, it will start to carve a pathway that allows this to stabilize instead of wobbling so much. So right now we're gonna take a breath from overhead and breathe down into the belly, and then we're gonna exhale down into the earth. 
So just make it up as if there is a tube that runs down through the center of your body, because there is, and it's measurable. It's called a toric field flow. And we are this torus, this toric field of energy as we are presenting as a human being. So let's breathe from overhead down through the center of your brain, through the center of your throat, through the center of your chest, all the way down through your solar plexus into your belly. Breathe all the way down to your belly. Big belly inhale, breathe with your belly, not with your chest. And then exhale, pull the navel back to the spine and shoot that breath right down into the earth. And then take a breath up from the earth, right into the belly. And then we're gonna exhale and shoot that right up through the chest, through the throat, through the center of the brain, and just shoot it right out the top of your head, like a whale and a blowhole at the top of his head or a dolphin. Now let's just do the same thing again. Deep breath in through the center of the brain, through the throat, all the way into the chest, all the way down to the belly. And don't breathe with the upper lobes of your lungs. Breathe down here with your belly, in and out with your belly. And then exhale that breath down into the earth. Now, we're going to do add some things on here so that we can increase the potency of this, all right? So pull your shoulder blades together, drop them down. Now, take a breath up from the earth, right up into your belly again, but keep your shoulder blades squeezed and down. Rolls your heart open, anchors you in the back of the heart, okay? Squeeze those blades together, drop them down. Breathe up into the belly. Then we're going to exhale right up, right in front of that muscle tension that you can feel with your blades squeezing, right up through your throat, roll your eyes up. And feel the tension right behind your eyes or the muscle contraction from doing that. And exhale right through that tension and shoot that breath right out the top of your head. Now, take a breath from above your head, right down through that tension again. And you're starting to awaken in this elevator shaft in the central core channel. Right in through the throat to the chest and those blades, squeeze them. And then exhale right down into the earth. Now, relax your eyes and, uh, and your shoulder blades for just a moment you probably already start to feel some energy gathering in the core of your body. So we're gonna add some more onto this, okay? Here comes the rest. Now, this one, you have to imagine that you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop that action instantly. You would squeeze certain muscles to be able to do that. So squeeze the muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl. It's called mula bandha and it means root lock. We're gonna lock this energy down at the base of the spine. So now we're gonna take a breath up from the earth, right through those squeezed muscles, right into the belly. Just squeeze those muscles and breathe into your belly at the same time. And it creates this kind of squeezing and expansion at the same time. That's good. And if it's clumsy, you're right on cue, okay? Just for starters. And now, big full belly, squeeze those muscles in the pelvic bowl. Now, contract those shoulder blades again. You've already done this. Exhale up between the blades, roll your eyes up and shoot that right out the top of your head. And let's keep all that in place. Inhale from overhead, right? through that tension behind the eyes, right through your throat, right to behind the heart where those blades are squeezing and big belly. Draw it all the way down to the belly. And now squeeze those muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl, that root lock, and exhale, shoot that breath down into the earth. Keep it all in place just one more time. Breathe up from the earth right into the belly. Squeeze the blades, roll your eyes. It's actually quite simple. And exhale all the way up through as you breathe into the belly, exhale up through the heart, through the throat, through the center of the brain and out the top of the head. Now let's just relax everything and come right back in here. Just notice how you feel in your body, first of all. First of all, there becomes this sense of self. There's a buoyancy. Oftentimes people will report that the room looks lighter. They feel lighter, more gathered. You can just do that practice and it will literally change your come from in life. It will change your vibrational frequency. It will raise it automatically because you're anchoring in the body. When we embody and anchor ourselves in the body this way, our vibration automatically increases. And an increased elevated vibrational frequency leads to healing and happiness and wholeness. Now, I have one more section of this I'd love to go into because it, it's truly life-changing for people to recognize how much support there is for energy medicine inside of our system. Okay, let's go back to that person who entered the room, okay? This person who walks through the door and they push your buttons. I want you to understand that these are your buttons, okay? These are your buttons. If those things did not exist and this was just rising the way that it's rising here, there would be no buttons to push. So we don't want to keep avoiding people that push our buttons. We want to, we want to dissolve the buttons themselves so that we're free to live in the company of anyone and know that we are here being supported to our awakening. 
So imagine that the person who walked in this doorway actually uh, was a request by you at some higher self level uh, that you requested as some soul contract before you ever came in here because you wanted to find your buttons and dissolve them. You wanted to build some circuitry in this lifetime. So, so let's start asking a really brilliant question. Instead of asking, why do you do that thing that you do that upsets me so much? I've asked you many times not to do it. I've explained it and you still do it. Instead of just like doing all that, let's just turn this into something that's going to serve us no matter what. Whether they ever get you or they ever agree or whether, whether you ever see eye to eye has nothing to do with how we're going to benefit from this situation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask a better question. When they walk through that doorway or when you just think of them in the doorway of your mind, um, there's a great question that you can ask. Instead of asking why, ask where. Where in my body do I feel an activation when I think of you or when I see you? Where in my body do I feel a charge of energy? Because here's what happens. This energy is trying to rise and it rises, but it hits this and then it has to go around it. And then it hits this and then it has to go around it. And it hits this and has to go around it. So when that rising energy is hitting this gap that has no pathway carved through it, it hits it and we feel it like a knot in our stomach or tightness in our chest or a lump in our throat or neck pain or headache or whatever. That's how it works. So the energy is hitting something. We want to know where is it hitting? Because if I could get that dissolved, I could change all of this. And that's what we're interested in. So let's do this. Think of this person. They're coming through the door, they're in the room with you, here they are, and here we go again. But this time we're gonna ask a better question. Where in my body do I feel a charge when I think of you or when I see you? Is it here, is it here, is it here? Where is it? I'm gonna invite you to squeeze, hug that area, wherever it is that you find it, hug it, and then try to implement some of those anchor points that we were just working with, you know, like squeezing the blades and rolling your eyes and getting aligned up and anchored in the body. So. Find yourself back in this channel and hugging this area that is activated because of this person. And now let's do a central channel breath again. Let's breathe up and down right through that area so that we can start to carve a pathway and generate some energetic circuits. And that allows us to make change. So let's say it got you in the gut or got you in the chest or got you in the throat. I'm gonna just pick the throat just so everyone can kind of see what I'm doing. Here. I'm gonna hug my throat. I'm gonna hug it. How do I do that? Just kind of squeeze it down so that I can center my attention, my mind's focus on this area. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a breath up from the earth right into my belly. I'm squeezing my blades and dropping them down. And I'm going to exhale up through that area and right up through my throat where I'm squeezing my throat as well. I'm going to roll my eyes up and keep exhaling right up through this path that I'm carving. And then I'm going to take an inhale from overhead right down through my throat or wherever it is for you in this moment. Squeeze that area, breathe all the way into your belly, draw it down into your belly. Then squeeze that mula bandha, that root lock. Just squeeze those muscles if you were going to the bathroom and you had to stop right now. Squeeze those muscles and exhale, shoot that breath into the earth. And then take a breath up from the earth into the belly, right up through those squeezed muscles, squeeze your blades, roll your eyes. We're gonna exhale, squeeze that area wherever the other one was. And we're just carving a pathway right up through this area. Exhale at the top of your head. If you do that in a repeated pattern two or three times on anyone who's pushing your buttons, you will start to feel a sense, not only will it relieve you in this particular moment and keep you doing from, keep you from doing anything you might regret, like saying something or you know doing those things that we do. Now, it will allow you not only to alleviate your stress in the, in the given moment, it will prevent buttons being pushed in the future because we literally are carving a pathway through those blockages that have had us, you know, uh, kind of um, hostage, holding us hostage. And so, so this, is, this is a way to begin to understand that we are energy and we're trying to learn how to route ourselves through this miraculous system that we are in a way that accesses every aspect of our consciousness and allows us to be tapping our wholeness all the time instead of just trying to dodge and avoid and treat symptoms and that type of thing. There's something greater in store for you than just treating symptoms. And so we want to engage in that, in that sort of fullness that allows that to express 
uh, in our daily lives. So hopefully that's helpful answering your question, but trying to give everyone a little bit of an experience all, uh, all at the same time. Absolutely. And I love that exercise. I felt a difference. I followed along and I felt really empowered and, um, and imagine that person. So I'll be adding this to my daily practice. Thank you so much, Dr. Sue. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it gives us a tool to be able to acknowledge what's happening and also to recreate a new pathway, as you were saying. Um, question that came up would be, what influences our body chemistry the most when it comes to energy medicine? Sure. So, you know, unresolved emotion is the number one cause for our chemistry to go to acidic from worry and the chemicals that are produced inside of worry. When those chemicals are broken down by the body, it leaves an acid ash in the body. So this takes us into another conversation about body chemistry, et cetera. But it's very important for people to realize that if they are... Um, trying to raise their vibrational frequency, which has become a popular conversation. How do I raise my vibration? It isn't always only ever thinking positive thoughts and making sure that you, you live in certain ways, that you exercise and you eat more vegetables than you do uh, animal proteins and, and, and you know, more raw than, than cooked and, you know, as much as you can, whenever you can, and those types of things and getting eight hours of sleep and uh, drinking eight glasses of water and, you know, those types of basic foundational rules that we were taught growing up. Um, it is that, and it is, it is more that, that unresolved emotion continues to, to, you know, tap the nervous system into this fight or flight process that we were describing. And it continues to do it. And it, it does it when we're not even thinking about it. It does it on a subconscious level. And the more unresolved emotion there is, the more we're constantly pumping adrenaline and cortisol into the system, which acidifies us. And then the body has to go to work to neutralize that acid. And that work that it takes to neutralize the acid is work that could be working on healing your asthma or your allergies or your digestive issues or your headaches or your back pain or your neck pain or your you know, spinal pain or whatever it is. Um, and so we want to free that energy up so that it's not constantly trying to battle this chemical imbalance, which happens to be a very high priority on the body's priority list. So we want to get that one checked off, get it off the list so that the body can spend its energy on doing other things. And another thing that we have to realize is how this ties together with raising your vibrational frequency. The more acidic your body, the lower the vibrational frequency. Our bodies are designed to be alkaline in nature. And the more, you know, here, here are the big bad guys when it comes to alkalinity. A coffee, tea, sugar, soda, cigarettes, alcohol, too much animal protein, ice cream. I'm so sorry about that one. Ice cream and even chocolate. Now, so chocolate's good, but chocolate has, uh, you know, the sugar in it that, that speeds the body up and revs us up. And a byproduct of our body being revved up is acid. It produces acid in the body. So, so if we're doing too much of that, too much of the time, we produce more acid than our bodies can neutralize in a 24 hour period. And so we end up in trouble. We end up lowering our vibration. So here we are out here thinking all these positive thoughts and doing all these things and exercising and getting my rest and drinking my water, and doing all the stuff that we're supposed to do. But my, but my life is still the same. You know, I still get aggravated at these people and I still have these buttons, et cetera. So now that we know what to do about the buttons, let's address this thing because we will, re we will recreate buttons if our vibration is low, because when our vibration is low, we're attracted to negative thoughts. We're attracted to worry. We're attracted to worst case scenario. We're attracted to, oh, that's probably not gonna work. We're drawn to that world. So when we raise our vibration, we're attracted to thoughts of possibility. We're attracted to inspiration. We're attracted to thoughts and, and activities that are life affirming and consciousness developing. So it, it all comes down to like, how am I vibrating? What's going on? What is my body chemistry? And so if we can allow ourselves to improve our lifestyle, but also address the number one reason that we get too acidic, which is unresolved emotion. Now, here's how to do that. If we're, you know, just just plagued with unresolved emotion. We're carrying anger. We're always agitated. We're frustrated. We just wish people would do what we're doing. And we think people are you know, this, that, or the other if they're not doing what I'm doing. And you know, this is big, it's up for us right now in our world. So it's our responsibility to recognize that the highest vibrational frequency 
act that I can take. The way to raise my vibration is to keep my chemistry in check, is to keep me dealing with my own emotional states. So if I regularly feel abandoned or like I don't matter, or I regularly feel depressed, or I regularly feel anxious, which is on the rise right now in, inside of our cultures, here's what to do. The same thing you would do with this person walking through your door. Now it's happening inside your own consciousness. I worry, I'm anxious, I'm feeling depressed. They're not doing it to me. This is happening right in here, even when no one's around. So do the same thing. Start breathing up and down the central channel and then ask yourself, where am I activated in my body as I'm feeling depressed? Where am I feeling a charge in my body when I focus on my depression? Where am I feeling a charge in my body when I feel anxious about the future of the world and what's going on on this planet? Where do I feel the anxiousness or the distraught feelings or the, the feelings of, of, you know, of, uh, of question? So then you would squeeze and hug that area and do this central channel breathing and build some circuits to allow an alleviation of you getting caught and stuck like a broken record or a skipping CD. I guess I'm kind of revealing how old I am back when records were a thing, although they're making a comeback. So, you know, that'll be a little more embedded in, uh, you know, in the conversations. So, so build those circuits and allow yourselves to be consciously present um, in a beautiful way to yourself, to your mind, be present to your mind and, and help it heal because the mind is what is distorted and is disconnected. So by embracing the mind and, and showing it how you can create the environment and where in which it doesn't have to resonate at these low vibrations and constantly be percolating on these worry-based thoughts and ideas. And, and, and do this same central channel breathing. And you will find yourself in a beautiful state of self-acceptance and self-love, even if just a moment ago you were feeling anxious or depressed or whatever the case may be. Now, lastly, I also wanna share that you can do this with your dreams and your visions, your aspirations for yourself. You can ask yourself, you know, I want, I'm choosing this life for myself. It's not happening yet, but I'm choosing it. Well, the only reason it's not happening yet is a circuitry issue. The circuits aren't in place for that to be a reality in your in your little environment, in your, you know, your singular universe inside of the larger universe. So let's build the circuits and allow that to be true. So you dream your dream, you get it down, you get it all up in it and dreaming it as if it's happening right now. And then you ask yourself, where is there a charge in my body when I think of such things? Or maybe it makes me a little nervous, but it's my dream. So where in my body am I activated? Essentially what you're asking is where is the energy hitting and not able to go through? And in the middle of that, you find it and you hug it and you start breathing up and down the central channel and you will develop the circuits that will allow those dreams to manifest in your life much more readily, much more easily. Now, you know, this is just a tiny dose of the work that I teach, but, but it's a way to get a start. And it's, it's a way for, until someone could take a longer course, it's a way for somebody to just really nail it and feel empowered that we're stewarding this energy that we are and allowing it to be set free to clean house and to welcome new and more robust energies through this toric field flow that I live inside of every day. So hopefully that's helpful. Dr. Sue, this has been so powerful. Um, not only have you guided us through a process to rework our circuitry and heal, you've also invited us into connecting with our manifesting power, right? And, and aligning with that. So thank you so much for this practice. Uh, I personally really enjoyed it and I will be practicing it. Thank you. Um, uh, my, as, my great joy. Thank you. And as we begin to close today, is there are there any last words? Is there any other message within you that you'd like to share, how people can follow up um, after this uh, or continue to grow? Oh, absolutely. So people can follow up with uh, this conversation by uh, reaching me and my website, drsuemorter.com. It's D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com. That's easy. I have loads of, uh, of coursework and, and materials that people can utilize as, as support to uh, really developing more about uh, this conversation and these practices, for sure. 
Uh, there also is a message that I would just love to impart, and that is there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing broken. There is nothing missing. There is nothing that that was left behind when you came in. You didn't land in the wrong family or in the, on the wrong planet, or the, well, some people feel sometimes. It isn't that way. It's a circuitry issue that we cannot perceive our magnificence and our ability to transmute and transform anything and everything that we come into contact with. And we're here to learn how to awaken to that. We are here awakening to our true masterful creatorship. And the energy codes and the work that I'm teaching is completely devoted to, to showing you how to do what is rightfully you to do and yours to do. And so uh, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing wrong is definitely a mantra that I would love everyone to, to recognize that everything is whole and complete. It's just a matter of me building the circuits to be able to perceive my magnificence. And, and up to this point, perhaps I, I've not quite gotten that done. So let's continue, right? That's how we do. That's how we ex expand and explore and live an adventurous life. Thank you, Dr. Sue. Yes, there's nothing broken. There's nothing wrong. We're on this journey and we have some tools today for Dr. Sue to continue healing, continue magnetizing our potential into our lives. Thank you, Dr. Sue. Thank you all Absolutely. for listening. Yes, my great joy. We also have some free gifts for people. So, uh, so do enjoy those as well. So, blessings, everyone.